Okay, so this we can go to the um, we can go to another diagram. Okay, here's another sort of pipe, and essentially this is like a funnel, like this, except that we've got um, this time a change in altitude. Okay, and so we can go to point one, and we've got point two at the exit as well. And essentially, because of these, you know, these walls um, restrict any flow in, into and out of this pipe between point one and point two, we know that the energy going in, okay, is the energy going out, conservation of energy. Okay, so that applies. We have the energy at point one equals the energy at point two. Okay, and so what's the energy at point one? Well, we, first off, we've got um, kinetic energy, which we know is one half m c squared. Okay. So this is mc squared at point 1, and we've got mc squared at point 2. We've then got the potential energy at point 1 and 2, which is mgz1 and mgz2, okay? And so here we've got z1 as the height and z2 as the height. We've got c1 and c2 as our in input and exit velocities. And then lastly, we've got the flow work, p1, v1, and p2, v2, Okay? P1, V1, and P2, V2, going in and out of the pipe. So this is a bit like the continuity type situation. And so you can put these together. You add them all up, okay? Kinetic energy plus potential energy plus the flow work energy, and you end up with an equation that looks something like this, okay? So we've got, here we've got our flow work for one, flow work for two, we've got the Kinetic energy for point one, the kinetic energy for point two, and we've got the potential energy for point one and the potential energy for point two. And you add all, those all up and you get a constant because we know that the conservation of energy indicates that at point one and point two, those energies are going to be the same. Okay? So those values equal each other. Now we're dealing with, um, we're dealing with incompressible flow. Okay? So we're dealing with liquids or fluids that are running at less than sort of 50 to 100 meters per second, okay? But all liquids will, be, will follow this equation. There are a few conditions, but we'll cover them in a second. But essentially, we've got this equation, and we're thinking, okay, well, that's great, that's useful, but there's ways we can simplify this. Now, we know it's incompressible, so the volume is going to be constant, okay? Whatever's between point one and point two isn't going to change in terms of volume because the flow is incompressible. If you block off point two and you try putting more fluid in at point one, it's not going to go in because the fluid cannot compress. Obviously, if we're dealing with a compressible fluid, then you can put more in <coughs> at a higher pressure. But we're dealing with incompressible flow. So we know that V1 and V2, or the volume going in at V1, and the volume flowing out at V2 is going to be the same. So we can assume that the volume in the middle is going to be the same. <coughs> And so what we can do is we can divide both sides of this equation by V, okay? Well, what use is that? Okay, well, let's, let's just do it and see what happens. And so we end up getting, so P1 with V's gone because we've divided it by V. Okay, well, there we go, that's fine. Then we've got 1 over 2V times MC is 1 squared, okay? MGZ over V, and, you know, the same for side 2, and that will equal the constant. Okay, well, we're thinking, well, what use is that? What, what have I done that helps? Well, the thing is, is because we know it's compressible, we also know the density is the same. And the density, we covered last week, is m divided by v. And so we can simplify this, m divided by v, m divided by v, and the same here, m divided by v, and m divided by v, by replacing that with rho, which is the symbol for density. And so you end up getting this form of the equation. And this is what we know as Bernoulli's equation. Okay. Now, the advantage of this over the equation two, two equations ago, of this form, is that these are now pressures. They're not energies, okay? So instead of working in joules, which, you know, we might not want to do, we can now work in pressures, which we're all familiar with from last week. Okay, so we've got pressure one, one-half times rho c squared, and we've got the potential, you know, the pressure due to the potential energy. Now, you might recognize this, We've got rho g h, or rho g z, okay? And last week, we covered hydrostatic pressure, which we know is rho g h, yeah? Well, h is the height, or z1 here is the height. 
And so this is the hydrostatic pressure. Okay, so it links in with last week's work on sta static flow. Okay. And then obviously we've got the same at point two. We've got our pressure here plus the one-half rho c squared. So this is the pressure due to velocity. And then we've got a pressure due to a change in height. And that all equals a constant. Okay. And so we can, we can say that if we just took one side of these, um, in this equation, then that equals the total pressure. Okay. And so you can see that if, uh, if our um, <coughs> velocity goes up and everything else stays, well, and, and this stays the same, then the pressure will go down. Okay? And if the height of the, uh, this goes up and the velocity stays the same, then the pressure will also go down, because this has to remain constant. Okay? That's the total pressure. Now, I've got a little demonstration for you to demonstrate this principle, and I'm going to need a volunteer. So... Does somebody want to come up and uh, want you to do something? Basically, I'll show you what I would like you to do. We're going to have a little competition. <coughs> I've got a funnel here. Okay? Put the ping pong in here and we're going to have a competition. One of you and I, we're going to try and see if we can hit the ceiling with the ping pong ball. Okay? My lungs aren't particularly good, but I'm sure you young things are perfectly capable, so I'm going to need one of you. You want to have a go? Okay. There you go. So if you come and stand up. Okay, I'd like you to you know, hold it vertical, hold it okay, <laughs> and blow in it as hard as you can to get it. <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, so... So, can, you know, is it working, do you think? Or not really. Not really? No. Okay. Why doesn't it work? Why doesn't it work? Well, essentially, yeah, you can sit down now. Well done. Okay, so what we've got going on, okay, is we've got the flow coming out of here, okay, and due to the small gaps that we've got at those points, okay, we know from continuity that you reduce the area, you gain in speed. Okay, and from Bernoulli's equation, which we'll just go back to, we know that if you reduce the area, so reduce the area, C goes up, and because this is constant, if C goes up, P must go down. And so, in fact, to demonstrate this, you can actually... I've, got, I've been practising this. It should work. But you can essentially hold the ball up upside down. Okay, so we're doing it this way up now. So we've got a funnel like that with the ball here. Okay, and so essentially I should be able to hold this ball up. This ball will defy gravity. But not a very good demonstration, but it, it does work. Okay, see? And so that's exactly... This is demonstrating... This is demonstrating Bernoulli's equation. Yeah? So we have the same situation. The C goes up, the pressure must go down. Because the pressure is down, because the pressure around the top of the ball is less than atmospheric pressure, which is applying at the bottom, the ball stays up. It defies gravity. Okay? <coughs> so this shows you an application of, uh, of Bernoulli's, Bernoulli's equation. Okay? Now we, we can... We can name each of these uh, each of these pressures, okay? The P, P1 and P2, we know as P, and that's called the static pressure. You may see it in your problems known as gauge pressure. That's the same thing, okay? If we do P, P on its own is going to be the static pressure. We've got here the dynamic pressure. Now, you can think dynamic, well, that makes sense. It's dealing with velocity. Velocity moves. It's dynamic. And so we end up with the dynamic pressure. And then lastly, last week we said rho GH is the hydrostatic pressure. Well, funnily enough, we call it the hydrostatic pressure here. Okay? So this, this stuff is important to remember how to work it. Okay? This is Bernoulli's equation. And like I said, you'll be using it from this point onwards, and you'll be using it next semester. And for if some of you are doing aero, you can't make an aero 4 fly without knowing this stuff. Okay? 
There are, there are some conditions to this equation, to this form of Bernoulli's equation. Okay? The first condition is that there's no heat transfer between <coughs> the outside or the external world and the pipe. Okay? And so this is known as adiabatic flow. Okay? Adiabatic flow means there's no heat transfer. So with that pipe that we saw on uh, slide 15 or whatever, is it 15, this pipe here, okay, you can imagine that our pipe is extremely well insulated, so there's no heat transfer from the outside world from here into the flow, okay? So there's no change in temperature. We're dealing with what's known as adiabatic flow. So that's adiabatic flow, okay? The other idea is that there's no work done on the fluid. We, as we said, there's no energy going into the fluid or energy coming out of the fluid. And the, generally, the way that we put energy into a fluid or take energy out of the fluid is that we have a pump or a turbine, okay? You stick a pump in the fluid, suddenly you provide it with, provided it with pressure, okay? And obviously, that will add to this equation. The same with a turbine. You put a turbine in the fluid, you're taking energy out of the flow. So, say you've got a wind turbine, okay? You've got a flow of fluid. You can imagine that's a flow of fluid heading towards the wind turbine. And the wind turbine turns, taking energy out of that fluid. So again, that changes Bernoulli's equation. But we're assuming that there's no work done. Okay? We've also assumed that the flow is frictionless. Okay? So there's no temperature change. And what's more, when you've got a pipe, okay, and we'll be dealing with this next semester, at the edge of the pipe, okay, you've got your pipe at the edge of the pipe, the flow is actually... Um, sticking to the side of the pipe. Right, very close to the pipe, the flow velocity will be zero. But in the middle of the pipe, obviously the flow velocity is going to be our value C. Okay? But we're assuming that the flow in that side, that pipe, all moves at the same speed. We're not, we're not dealing with any friction. This is what we're going to cover next semester. Okay? In book two, which we'll get um, in uh, February, uh, we'll be covering friction in the flow. Dealing with and this, is, this um, deals with a principle known as, well, a property of fluid known as viscosity. Okay? Um, and that relates to the, the, um, the friction in the pipe. Again, we'll cover that in more detail next semester. And lastly, the flow is incompressible. We've said that the row is constant, and so we can apply that principle that, that uh, M divided by V is going to be rho, and we can apply, stick that in. We end up with these... Pressures. Okay, so, and so we're dealing with liquids or with gases at less than 100 meters per second ish. Okay, generally in the problems and on the exam, if we want you to, if we want you to assume the flow is incompressible, then we'll tell you. Okay, so you don't need to worry too much about working out whether or not it's incompressible or not. We'll tell you if it's if we're dealing with incompressible flow, and the assumptions you can make. <coughs>